You hear this one a lot. Science has proven evolution, therefore evolution is true. Since evolution is true and Christians don't believe it, then Christians don't believe science and they aren't rational people. No, there are plenty of Christians that believe in evolution. You're just talking about creationists. And yes, evolution is pretty much true. I'd say about 99.99999%. It is part of science as well, and the fact that you don't believe it and believe in all other parts of science, which I'm assuming you do, just means that you're just cherry picking whatever doesn't fit with your worldview. That makes it pretty clear that your worldview is uh, probably not true. Really, let's put that claim to the test. First off, evolution in the sense that things change is evident. No rational person disputes that. Therefore, rational Christians believe it. We can observe change. That's great, and I'm assuming you're going to call this adaptation instead of evolution. But no, it's called evolution, and it's basically what you don't believe in except on a smaller scale. Just think about it this way. Things do change, yes, and you don't doubt that. But when things change over a really, really long period of time, then you'll have big changes. Really, it's as simple as that. One thing that you creationists fail to understand is the large period of time that it actually took. Life has been around for billions of years. You've had all this time to make all these small changes which eventually become big changes. And all the species that we have today is the product of all these big changes. But evolution in the sense that life came from non-life and then that life began to randomly generate new genetic information? Ah, <sighs> I can't stress this enough. Abiogenesis is different from evolution. Even if you prove abiogenesis wrong and incorrect, that won't harm evolution at all. Life could have began with a magic dancing giant elephant that created all life and evolution would still be true. You just have to recognize that these two are two different separate topics and over time it eventually produced humans, is something entirely different, and something that quite honestly doesn't hold up against science. It actually does. That's why in the scientific community there's no doubt that evolution is true. It's actually one of the most basic scientific facts out there. Just because you're too ignorant to look at the evidence doesn't make the theory wrong. In other words, evolution in the sense of molecules to man is not scientifically plausible and therefore should not be viewed as scientific fact. Quite honestly, it is in great opposition to science, that is, observational science, the kind of science we can test and repeat and use our five senses to understand. All you're saying is that it doesn't happen. Where's your paper? Where is your hypothesis? What are you proposing that could possibly be the reason on why this couldn't happen? All you're doing is making claims like, her, her evolution can't be true because of this and that without giving us a proper explanation or any scientific experiment that you have done yourself. But since you're a creationist, you're probably awfully good at making claims without backing it up with evidence. And then you go on and say that science agrees with you? Give me a f***ing break. Don't pretend that you're part of the scientific community. Science demonstrates that over time, living organisms lose genetic information. They don't gain it. Absolutely false. You're just pulling shit out of your ass right now. Why don't you give me the scientific paper that says that you can only lose information and not gain it? Okay, okay, okay. I'll give a proper scientific explanation for this. There are plenty of instances in which genetic information can be gained. In fact, mutations in general can be classified as two different types. One is the loss of function and the other is the gain of function. Side note, there are actually more than these two types, um, it's actually more complicated than that, and I would get to that if this were a genetics course, but it's not, so let's stick on topic. Gain of function mutations are literally what they sound like. It's when the transcribed gene or protein literally has a new function than what it's supposed to be compared to the wild type. I admit that these gain of function mutations are rare compared to the loss of function ones, and also that they are usually not beneficial, but that does not mean that beneficial gain of function mutations do not exist. Mutations quite frankly are random, but natural selection is not. Natural selection selects the traits that are beneficial to the organism and makes sure that they get passed on. One part of evolving was to outcompete other organisms in terms of survival. Complexity was a byproduct of evolving towards a fitter state. Gaining function that benefited the organism was very powerful and was easily selected for by natural selection against other organisms. This was especially true for organisms that lived during early earth times. Gain of function also does not necessarily just mean mutations. There are plenty of other ways in which you can gain genetic information. The main mechanism that caused one species to have a different number of chromosomes from another species was through a translocation process. 
Translocation can result in many different combinations at huge steps at a time, which will ultimately result in new proteins that are either beneficial or detrimental. This, again, is selected for by natural selection. That same science demonstrates that life doesn't arise from non-life. No, abiogenesis covers that, and even if you prove abiogenesis wrong, you're not hurting evolution one bit. But for all you crazy people out there that are so obsessed with abiogenesis, let me just give a simple explanation on how it worked. The first genetic information was RNA. We needed something that was able to replicate with ease, but also something that was relatively immune to destruction. DNA was too easily destroyed, and proteins do not have simple replicative processes. Only RNA fits in this category. And now for the big question. How did single strands of genetic information become a single-celled organism? Well, remember that the first organisms were very, very simple. As long as there was a method of preserving the RNA and give it opportunities to replicate, we technically have our first organism. But of course, you can't really call this thing living because it is unable to metabolize. Anyway, natural selection selects for genetic information to be passed down, and it does this whether or not the organism is alive. Keep in mind that things evolved together. When protein synthesis processes came about, they came about together. One thing that creationists have yet to grasp is the fact that multiple things can happen at the same time, and that to me is really funny how they don't acknowledge that. So, continuing on, pre-organism material competed. They evolved in a similar manner we know today, and eventually we have our first organism. Remember that this is just in simple terms. So you're probably wondering how many of the essential organic compounds came about today. Well, the signature experiment of this was the Miller-Urey experiment, and it showed that early earth conditions can spontaneously produce many essential organic compounds, such as hydrogen cyanide, formaldehyde, and also amino acids. But because the Miller-Urey experiment was slightly behind since our knowledge of early earth conditions have changed since then, we usually only use this as a proof of concept, not evidence. Later, other scientists have done their own experiment, this time properly mimicking early earth conditions, and we were able to create many, many other remarkable things. For example, we now know that we can create adenine from hydrogen cyanide and ammonia in water. We also know we can obtain RNA and DNA from prebiotic chemistry with low temperatures. We even produced alcohols, aldehydes, and even organic acids. I know, we are far from completely mapping out the process of abiogenesis, but we are a lot closer than you would think. Don't just claim that abiogenesis can't happen without doing the proper research. Again, you need to write a paper. If you're so sure that abiogenesis cannot happen, why don't you show us your experiment that says that it definitely cannot happen? Oh, you don't have a paper. And you haven't done the experiment, huh? Hmm. Oh, you creationists are so funny. We're Follow along from. if you would. Fact one, there is no known observable process by which new genetic information can be added to an organism's genetic code. None. That pretty much refutes evolution right away because there's no way to go from a fish to an amphibian without adding new information, right? <sighs> Alright, I already talked about this earlier, um, but another mistake you're making is that you are automatically assuming evolution would require gaining information. Evolution can happen while losing information too, as long as the new organism is better fitted for the environment than the old one. Not only is it not required for you to gain information to proceed with evolution, there are ways to gain information too, so you just fucked yourself over. If living organisms cannot produce new genetic information, how can anything gradually change into something of higher intelligence or form or complexity? That is, how can anything evolve from an amoeba to a man without adding new genetic information? <sighs> Please don't use amoebas as ancient organisms, they are modern organisms. You know, one thing I hate about making response videos is that the video you're responding to continues on because they can't hear you. And then they continue to talk and talk and now I don't know what to say because I already debunked it previously. So anyway, moving on. The answer, of course, is that it can't, plain and simple. Now, some have speculated and they have imagined all kinds of things and they brought in artists to produce creative renderings based on guesses and they have been successful in telling a very convincing story that humans evolved from ape-like creatures. But those are just drawings, people. They're just stories. Drawings and stories that are based on reality, though. We're not saying that these drawings are evidences, they're just fun ways to reflect what we already know. And of course some of these drawings don't accurately reflect what evolution is, so I feel like that's where a lot of people are getting a lot of their misconceptions. So yeah, please don't use drawings as evidence for evolution, they're only there to poke fun. But what we really observe is humans are humans and apes are apes. No, that's not what we observe. We observe the fossil record, which shows us that we and apes have a common ancestor. 
we have DNA evidences, we have protein evidences, we have plenty of evidences that tell us that we all share common ancestors. So no, humans don't stay humans and apes don't stay apes. If you're talking about observe in the sense that we can see animals evolving directly through our eyes instead of through other evidences that I listed, then no, we will not see that happen. There simply hasn't been enough time. Evolution takes millions of years before you see dramatic changes. Science hasn't even been around for a million and you expect us to have direct observations? That is simply not going to happen, I'm sorry. But we have observed speciation, and if you simply input that on Google, you would get a whole bunch of results. All you have to do to have speciation occur is to have two populations being unable to mate with each other. As long as they cannot produce fertile offspring, we will consider them two different species. And we have observed plenty of cases of these happening. For example, the Drosophila melanogaster, the black cap, the hawthorn fly, and plenty of other mosquitoes. Insects are generally easier to see speciation because their lifespans are shorter. But if you want to see something bigger, like bigger organisms, we've observed mice, we've observed fish, we've even observed polar bears to have speciation events occur. Face it, bitch, you've been back to a corner. Now, if fact one buried evolutionary thinking deep into the Precambrian soil, this next fact, fact two, tosses so much sediment on it that not even the greatest team of paleontologists with the latest subterranean gizmo could dig up the remains. Shut the fuck up. Check this out. Never, again, never has it been observed that life can come from non-life. So here are two major scientific evidences against evolution. I reiterate for clarity, life has never been observed to come from non-life, and there is no known, observable process by which new genetic information can be added to the genetic code of an organism. So molecules the man evolution doesn't really make scientific sense. Yet we are all here, and life is all around us in various forms. Although evolution cannot account for this, the Bible can. <laughs> the Bible reveals that the all-powerful, all-knowing, supernatural God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing, and all life according to its kinds, that is, each with its own set of genetic information. You fucking creationists love to use the word kinds, but you don't give a proper definition of it. Like, what do you mean with this own set of genetic information? That literally tells us nothing about the boundaries between each kind. In science, we have proper definitions for all our terminology, but you guys just pull shit out of nowhere and just don't even give a proper definition of it. Get the fuck out of here. So, again, what the Bible reveals makes sense of what we see and understand. No, it does not. I don't think the Bible tells us why we see all these fossils that give us evidence of evolution. Oh wait, Satan put those fossils in the ground to test our faith, right? Yeah, that's how it works. So yeah, we should be punished for being rational people and using logic to deduce our own conclusions. This is all a test, of course. Ah, oh, silly me for being rational. Evolution does not. Nuff said. The Bible is bullshit. Nuff said.